Hey, it's Coach Attacker Hive, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, watches. Not guns today, watches. Today's video is brought to you by Dry Fire Mag. Now, back in the old days, when we had the 226, you just squeeze all day long, get all the dry fire you want that way, okay? Now, these days, we moved over to the Striker Fire pistols, um, you know, the Glock 19, 320. So now, you send that and you get nothing, all right? So, in order to uh, give you something that it simulates a trigger squeeze, but it gives you something. So you've got you get, got that take up and you've got that little click. So I can take it up, get that click. So I know at least I can get up, I can get that, that good slack out, find the wall, click. Find the wall, click. Okay, so you know, if you don't have this, and it's like click, and you gotta, if you do your tap racks, you're good to go. If you get in the habit of going, well, I'm just resetting the trigger. You'll never do that for real. So you always want to do that tap rack. Or, even better, buy one of these. You know, if you go to the website, use promo code TACHIVE and get 10 bucks off. In previous videos, guys have seen my watch collection on the shelf over my shoulder, and I got a lot of questions uh, about it in the comments. So. We'll talk about this. Now, I already did a video on my current watch setup, and I got the, the Garmin Phoenix 6. This is what they're issuing to the, the guys on the team now. Uh, and this syncs with your phone and does everything you need to. Um, you know, so you don't ever need to suffer the embarrassment of wearing one of these around. These days, this is what I'm wearing. Okay, and just kind of, I've already done a, a video on this, but this is how we got there. All right, so I was never a watch guy back in the day, but my first paycheck in the Navy, which was about 200 bucks, I went down to the exchange and I bought myself this dive watch, good old citizen dive watch. Probably should have got something a little bit better, but man, I wore this thing for years. It worked. It's, I mean, it's, it still works. It's not quite as uh, accurate as it used to be, but, uh, that bad boy, uh, that still represent, represents my first paycheck in the Navy. Now, in Buds, you don't get any watches. I mean, hell, I wore this half the time. Uh, you don't always have that choice. So when I first got to SEAL Team 5, they issued me a G-Shock. Just that first one, you know, GP100, whatever the hell it was. I don't even know. I, I don't know models, guys, but man, G-Shocks work. They keep working. The G-Shocks that I have here, you know, good old Casio, the, the rubber armor that's on there, it'll get beat up, but there are companies out there, it's pretty easy to replace. So eventually, I mean, my philosophy behind watches was I wore it until it stopped working, whether the battery ran out or whatever, I threw it in a bag and then went and got a new one from supply, all right? Now, one of those times I rolled in there and there was a, a drawer full of tutors. And even I knew, not even being a watch guy, that that was a cool thing. So I, uh, I requisitioned one. I had to go and uh, get it fixed. It cost me about 300 bucks. But then, uh, you know, I, so I wore that for the rest of the time I was at SEAL Team 5, but I had to give it back. A few years ago, my buddy, who was a diver back in the 70s, he gave me this, his old tutor that had been flooded out since I think 1972. So I went to my, uh, my guy at Resco and uh, Kevin went and uh, he refurbed my watch for me. So this represents the, uh, the Tudor Submariner that I was issued uh, at SEAL Team 5. Now, the band that it's on, they call that a Longapo band. And back in Vietnam, uh, guys were rolling with their cool tutors and uh, the, the band that was issued with it, either the rubber ones or the, the fabric ones, would rot because you're always in that, that uh, you know, humidity and they're all in and out of the water. Uh, 
So on R and R, R&R, when they were at, uh, in in Longapo, Philippines, talked to some of those industrious Filipino guys, and they made this. So of course, you also have little, you know little decorations put on there. Got my SEAL Team Five, my Freddy the Frog with the stoner. Anyway, I actually ordered this band the month before Mount Pinatubo blew up. And uh, so I never got it. Now there's, uh, you know, talking to the guys at Resco, there's, they introduced me to a gentleman called uh, Jaffe Gerardo, and he's in the Philippines now, and he makes these things. So he finally, I finally got my order, and, you know, got it engraved, the whole nine yards, just, it, you know, that perfect representation of the time. So anyway, that's, uh, that's a little story behind my, uh, my tutor. And, uh, you know, honestly, this thing keeps a whole lot better time, <laughs> but it's still cool. All right. Um, all right. So the, the last watch I got issued when I was at Damnak at, uh, at Gold Squadron was this, uh, Seiko, the Arnie version. It's a pretty cool dive watch. Uh, you know, I used it for a bit. Uh, these days, the little LCD screen on there is too too hard for me to see uh, with my older eyes, but uh, it's still a badass watch. As we went along, the, the guys at, uh, at Gold Squadron started talking about making a watch just for Gold Squadron. So they contacted a couple different companies. They ended up going with, with Bremont, which is uh, a company that makes like... Um, ejector seats or something. <laughs> anyway, they make specific watches. So this is a gold squadron watch. You only get one. If you're, so if you're on a different squadrons, pick one. Mine's gold. So this is a slight gold color here. And on the back, you've got uh, the gold team lion on the, uh, whatever the winder face there. So that kind of rekindled my interest in watches. I like the mechanics of them, you know, I'm, I'm not going to spend $40,000 on a watch, but, uh, you know, I'll trade a gun for one. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so Resco, this was the Resco Gold Squadron version. So I've got the, the Braemont one that they actually went with. And then this is Smitty's rendition of the Gold Squadron watch. Uh, now, I just did a uh, an event for Panerai. Um, these folks paid a lot of money for a watch and it came with a little seal experience so i was out there did some teaching them how to shoot and stuff like that there was a couple of watch journalists there i didn't know that it was a thing but they were real interested in this watch they'd heard about it and i was like wow that's that's special anyway so uh the rest of these watches are stuff that these are all ones i was uh issued at uh at damn neck these are all ones that, that people have given me or I, you know, have used uh, over the years. And this is the last watch, this uh, little triple sensor from Casio. Of course, it's the only one that's still running on this on this block because uh, it's solar powered. So don't ever have to worry about changing the battery, still works. And it's, uh, it's only about, uh, oh, 12 years old or so. Um, still running fine. So Casio makes a really good, uh, reliable piece of equipment there. Now on my my mod two, this is my workout watch or when I'm going to be bashing things around. I got my old Phoenix five, uh, and then I got the new uh, Seiko. This one's solar, so again I don't have to worry about batteries in this sucker anymore. So if I'm not wearing this one, then this one's on my wrist. <laughs> So just a quick overview for the guys who asked about it, you know, of my, my watch collection. So if you like this content, uh, keep watching. Anyway, like, subscribe, leave me a comment.